Hello everybody, it's Max McAllister here from Traction Dynamics today to introduce another new product, one I've talked about in the past, and that is a manual preload adjuster for the rear shock. <clears throat> now, uh, uh, from the very beginning, uh, back in 2018, I uh, did a video that kind of explained how uh, Honda's computer is, uh, was, has been poorly programmed to run the adjuster on this bike. So on the preceding uh, 2001 to 2017 bike, the owner could select from a range, a numerical range of zero to 25 numerically. <clears throat> so you could very precisely set the preload on the rear shock anywhere you wanted it. Now, uh, for purposes of conversation, that, uh, that the adjuster is capable of adding up to 12 millimeters of preload to the rear shock spring. That won't mean anything to the typical gold wing owner. Now, those parts that adjust the preload on the shock from 2001 to 17 are also on the 2018 to current edition Honda gold wing, the exact same parts. Um, however, instead of giving the user the choice of selecting um, any number they want to precisely set the adjuster, Honda has used a computer and they offer you four icons. <clears throat> The icons are the dumb, one of the dumbest things on the motorcycle. I, I can't believe whoever conceived it, um, anyone ever approved it because it's just that stupid. So the icons are one person with no one up, one up with luggage, two up or two up with luggage. Two what? One what? One Japanese guy or one 300 pound truck driver from West Virginia? I mean, it, it, it makes no sense. You know, one tip, there's many American men that weigh more than a Japanese man and his wife put together. It's just, it's an irrelevant number. It means nothing. It's totally stupid. So, um, but past that, you would think they would have them spaced in a fashion that was equal. So the computer on the new bike actually starts by only using eight millimeters of the range of the adjuster. So you lose one third of the range of adjustment that the component is capable of just because they've got the computer poorly poor programmed. Next, <clears throat> when you go from the softest setting, which is one up, and you go to one up with luggage, it, it jumps two thirds of the way through the available travel on the adjuster. So it, it's, it's already mostly used up just by going to one up with luggage. Then you go to two up. Two up is almost all the way used 100% of the available travel of the adjuster. Two up with luggage is, is this much more. So on the old adjuster, you would argue, call it 24 and a half and 25. So if you think you're doing something, when you go from two up to two up with luggage, you're not. Nothing happens. It, the, it, it moves like putting a, pound, a half a pound of air in a tire. No one can tell it. No one can feel it. It's totally stupid. <clears throat> now, this could be easily rectified by Honda, but if they haven't done it in five years, they're not going to do it. So um, just give up. So knowing that it works terribly and is virtually useless, um, uh, I've said about making a manual preload adjuster that uh, will allow you to precisely set your preload and use the full 12 millimeter range that the adjuster is capable of. Now, this isn't for everybody. A lot of people like to touch a button and have a motor do something for them. <coughs> this <coughs> will require you to do a couple of minutes of work to change your preload. So if you're not a mechanic-y uh, kind of guy, uh, you might, this, this product isn't going to be for everybody. But if you're a guy who is mechanic-y and likes to fidget with his bike um, and, uh, you know, search for optimum settings and comfort, this will help you. This will be particularly helpful if you've got our aftermarket suspension on it, because there's some people that wish they could make it a little softer for when they're riding solo. <clears throat> well, this will allow you to soften the bike from our baseline setting. And uh, one of the problems we've encountered is just, you know, trying to, knowing this adjuster works so terribly, or Honda's adjuster works so terribly, that uh, we, uh, we really would never recommend that anybody use use it past the one up with luggage setting um, because that's already stiffer than where people used to ride um, our suspension on the previous bike. Most people rode between seven and 10 out of 25. 
when you hit that adjuster and go to warm up with luggage, you're already at like 14, you know, stiffer than most people would care to. So the, in its current configuration, it's basically useless. <clears throat> so now I've made a part that uh, what you'll have to do to use it is you'll have to uh, remove your seat. And once you remove your seat, there's an adjuster with a lock screw on it. You'll loosen the lock screw, turn the adjuster to a new setting that you, you might like, reset the uh, lock screw on it, put the seat back on, and that's, that's the limit of what you got to do. But in this video, I'm going to combine it and show you how to install it at the same time. So <clears throat> you'll come on over here with me. Just to be expeditious, I've already removed um, the side covers and seat from our bike. Um, every, most everybody is, knows how to do that. <clears throat> um, before you start, you want to run the adjuster down to one up, no luggage, because you want to take the internal preload off of the mechanism, the electronic mechanism that's pushing on the preload adjuster in the pump. It, it can be under tremendous pressure if you forget to do this, and you might strip the threads on the bolts that hold the cap on, which you'll get to, and I'll show you when we get there. <coughs> but... So step one, set the bike down to uh, one up, remove your side covers and seat. You're going to remove the right passenger uh, grab rail. Um, it uses a 12 millimeter bolt on 2018 to, and 19 bikes and then uh, 20 and up is a 10 millimeter headed bolt there. Uh, you need to remove this VIN plate cover. It takes a three millimeter Allen. There's a little tiny screw underneath here. It's in a rubber well nut. Uh, there's two Honda push pins at the back here. I just use the three millimeter Allen key, poke them in the middle, pull them out. <coughs> and then there's a uh, 10 millimeter uh, headed bolt inside here. And then this, you do have to kind of force it off a little tiny bit and that comes off. Uh, if you ever wondered what that plate was, that's uh, your permanent stamped VIN number and the frame is under there. Uh, you'll want to remove this bracket that holds the gas tank. Again, that's a 10 millimeter head bolt. That's all there is to that. <coughs> if there's an electrical connector here you'll need to remove. This is actually the sending unit for that tells the bike whether you're one up, two up, wherever you're at there. All right. Um, next, we got to learn to remove the saddlebag. Not removing it, we're just unbolting it. So there's an eight millimeter headed bolt up here at the top which is why you had to remove the grab rail. And then you'll need a five millimeter Allen key. We're gonna take, there's three bolts inside the saddlebag you gotta remove. Two are on the floor. One, are, one is on the back wall. It's in the top upper left corner. So, you know, there's one up there holding the top right. This is in the top left. <coughs> All right, so the saddlebag is loose from the motorcycle now. And we've got this fancy tool we made here. You can use a piece of wood or you can ball up a rag or almost anything. But you're going to pull the saddlebag away from the motorcycle. And wedge something in between the bag and the frame to, to hold it away. <clears throat> you got to put your hand back in here. Um, let me grab one more tool here. <clears throat> Make it easier on yourself if you undo this. Um, that's your electric seat connector. Just give you a little more access. Next, you'll need a 
10 millimeter socket, a one inch extension, and a normal 3 8 drive ratchet. And what we're trying to do is get in here and get the, uh, the bolts that hold the pump on. Can you see if we can bring the camera in there and maybe look, look down in? Can, can you see? Yeah. Yeah, so there's, there's your bolts. We're taking the pump bolts and leaving the bracket on the motorcycle. So there's two bolts here. If you get them cracked loose, you can take the ratchet off and then use your hand <coughs> to uh, spin them out. Now, our bike presently has one of our prototype manual preload adjusters on it, which I'm just going to I'm going to replace with a production version. Um, but the process is exactly the same, and I'm going to show you what you do with your electric pump. <coughs> now, if you happen to be in the installing suspension at the same time, you're going to have the shock out on the bench, and this will be, you know, done while it's on a bench. All right. And a magnet may be handy to have around in case you drop a bolt into the bike. But now the pump is loose. The pump itself has an electrical connector on it that you'll disconnect from inside here. If you can see that, it's a little gray connector. And at that point, you can bring the pump out loose on the side of the motorcycle. <clears throat> what you'll see when you take yours out is it's going to have this electric motor on it. Okay. So ours doesn't have that because we, we just played with that. Um, now, there's three uh, five millimeter Allen bolts on this. And I'm not doing this really, I'm not using power tools just because, you know, you might not have power tools. So just doing this real time with hand tools. So there's three screws that hold this on. On the factory electric pump, one of them is very long, long and tall. We're not gonna we're not gonna reuse that one. We're gonna reuse a shorter one that we supply you in our kit. So when you take your electric pump off, there is a bell crank on it that you're gonna remove. When you take your pump off, it'll look just like this. This tab is up. I'm just gonna say that. So in case you take it off and forget what you were doing, the tab goes up towards the top of the housing. So this pump now, we're gonna, we're not gonna use any of that anymore. You will get your cool new kit. The contents include, um, that's the lock screw that we're gonna use. Or no, that's the extra bolt, I'm sorry. Lock screw is in the housing. Sorry about our blister pack here. I can't see without glasses. A little knife. Just can't, can't complain about the packaging, huh? All right. I'm going to need a four mil on. Hang on one second. <coughs> so that's our lock screw. We're going to back that away. Um, this, this part mimics the worm gear in the Honda mo pump motor. We're just going to, instead of an mo electric motor turning it, we're just going to turn it with our hand. Uh, or with a tool. Uh, we ship the bearing dry just so it doesn't make any mess, this needle bearing. So there's two thrust washers and a needle bearing. They come on the shaft. Just lift that up between the two washers, put a little grease, and that's going to be hidden inside the cup forever. Uh, this just fits in there. It is tight because there's a, a seal there with it. Um, that keeps water and uh, moisture and all that out. Uh, there's an O-ring here. Some people will put a dab of grease, you know, to just make the O-ring stick, particularly because uh, 
it's uh, got an odd, sh you know, an odd shape that we're putting it in. But you can do that or not; it doesn't matter. So this one actually fits pretty good and uh, isn't really much of a hassle. So we're just going to lay that O-ring in there, and then you will uh, put put this in. You can't screw it up; it has a pattern. Oops, we got to put the bell crank on. Bell crank goes on to the shaft there. Actually, we'll put a little dab of grease on that too, just to be nice to it because it's under a lot of pressure. You can just kind of zing the threads on one side. <clears throat> now run this up all the way to the top so that it, it has minimum preload on it, no, or no pressure at all. And you're going to set it in the cup. There's a, a gateway where it lines up. Just make sure your O-ring's in place and the bolt hole pattern can only go one way. If you've, if you've screwed it up for any reason, just rotate it and you'll find where it lines up. Um, it does kind of help to know that the lock screw will be pointing out diagonally at you when the pump's there, so that'll help you <coughs> get that. Um, we're going to put back the two Honda screws. Uh, and you have little lock washer on them. It's not, uh, you can use it or not. It's not life or death. <coughs> Run those down. Make sure your O-ring's in there right. We supply you a third screw because the, the one on this pump is very, very long. You, you won't need it. So I'm going to run those down and tighten them. Let me get a ratchet. <coughs> All right. Now, the manual preload adjuster is installed. <coughs> and there's only one trick you'll need to know about it. It's reverse threaded. So if you, from the softest position, you're going to technically unscrew it to drive that uh, bell crank down inside of it. So it's just the way Honda made the part and we had to mimic it. So, uh, so we're ready to go here. Um, back in and <coughs> I am going to mount this so that I can show you what, what actually adjusting it'll look like. Um, we're not using the electrical connector for the pump anymore it, and it's fine where it is it doesn't it's fine hanging there it's not nothing bad pump goes behind the bracket uh, just just to, so you recall and this is fidgety you're not it, uh, to get this little screw in here you know I try and wrap my finger on it and hold the bolt so that I can get it through the bracket and start it into the pump you know get it at the pump so don't be surprised if this takes you a few tries if you've got, if, you know, you're doing it for the first time in your life. Because <clears throat> uh, there is very little space in here. But the option is removing the saddlebag, which is, you know, a big project. Very big project. So we found this shortcut to be very, very helpful. See, it's hard even for me. <laughs> there we go. Get it lined up. Hook those threads. And just because using a ratchet in here is challenging, I, I just try and thread it as much as I humanly can with my fingertips. All right. Now we'll tighten those two bolts.
All right. <clears throat> now, that's on uh, assemblies, you know, reverse of assembly is reverse of disassembly. So <clears throat> I'm going to throw the saddlebag bolts in back in it just so you can actually see. Now, one warning um, about the um, saddlebag. Underneath it, there are two hat washers. And as, as you pull it out, you might knock one off or knock it loose. Be sure those two hat washers are there under the saddlebag. You can look right at them and see them. They protrude through the uh, saddlebag as well, so you can see them there. Um, <coughs> so that should be easy enough. I just wiggle this bag around and you'll, so the nut can find, the bolt can find its home. By the time you got two of them, the rest should go pretty easy. And they do have a lot of float to them as a, as a rule, by the way. So, so three of the Allen bolts in the saddlebag. <coughs> now, while I'm doing this, I'll, I'm going to talk about setting the adjuster. Um, it has eight <coughs> full turns of adjustment. And, you know, you might find a little more, but the intention is to have eight full turns of adjustment. One turn on the adjuster, once you, once you feel it touch and it's starting to put pressure, one full turn of the adjuster is equivalent to three, uh, three digits on a 2001 to 17 bike. So you can think of each third of a turn as one. So you, our goal was to give you the one to 25, just like you would have had on a 2001 to 17 bike. So uh, working in one turn rotations is pretty good way to do it because that way you can kind of go three, six, nine, 12, you know, you can get, get in there where you want to be. Um, let's see, we'll throw this one little eight on up here. I'm not going to bother putting the handrail on here for this video because that's just a waste of time, but for, for what we're doing here. Now, uh, seat, heated seat connector. Now, your sensor, your motorcycle thinks that the shock is no longer connected to it, and uh, therefore your icon up on the dash will just sit there and flash forever unless you have this, which we have. So you just plug this uh, dummy plug in and uh, that's all there is to that. Um, and you can zip tie that off here on the bike somewhere just so that it's not flopping around. Um, you know, pick a point, whatever, whatever suits you. There's no right or wrong about this. I tend to try and zip tie it here with the seat electrical connector. And then your once we're all done and assembled, um, you'll have to uh, use the two rider icon to get it to stop flashing. Each one of those uh, icons is we're looking for a resistance. This pod provides the exact resistance to make it stop flashing. And we, we just thought, well, most people are two up, so we'll put two people riding the bike. So anyway, <laughs> that's so you're going to. Go through your menu just like you would, set it to two, but nothing's going to happen. It, we're just electronically stopping the bike from flashing. That's all it does. So um, that's in there now, and uh, that nothing will be connected to the sensor anymore um, or to the uh, little tra transmitter there. So that's all good. Um, <clears throat> then to adjust your suspension, I'm not going to bother with this. I'm going to keep this moving. I'm going to set the bike down um, real quick. The rest of it's still putting your covers and things back like your and pieces you've already taken off. Just I'm not going to show you that because we don't need to. But. Now if you're if you're super duper lazy, um, you could probably just take the two bolts out of your seat and lift, tip the front of the seat up a little bit and uh, put a tool in there. But, you know, it's not that hard to just pull the seat off. Uh, 
So if you come and look here, the adjuster, actually, why don't, why don't you come to this side and I'll go to that side because we'll, uh, I think you can see. So here's our adjuster. So you just put a tool on it and, uh, you know, we're going to, uh, we're going to go in, so it's all the way soft right now. So we're going to turn it in the reverse way you would think. So I feel it get tension on it. That's, we're going to call that zero. And I've just moved it three. There's six on the old bike. There's nine. That's a pretty good place to start. Um, if it were my bike, uh, you know, I ride them pretty soft, honestly, because uh, I don't weigh much and I ride solo. So that's equivalent of nine. <clears throat> um, and uh, then there is the little lock screw, which we put just to be super redundant. It sticks right out the side here. Can you, I don't know if you can get to that. You might have to uh, um, see the lock screw in there. You're just going to turn that in. You're, just, you're not doing anything crazy here. Just put a little tension on it. And that's it. And uh, so if I said, wow, you know, that's too stiff. By the way, if you're going to go out and go testing, don't bother hooking the electric seat up and putting the seat bolts in. The seat won't fall off or anything. Just go out and ride your bike around some, play with the adjuster. You can just come pull the thing up. You actually don't need to use the lock screw either if you're just going to do, go do some testing and checking and feeling things. You can just lock it down when you're done and, and you know, ready to, you got a setting you like and you're going to leave it there. But, you know, you'll loosen the lock screw. Turn the adjust, Ooh, that's the wrong one. So I'm going to say, well, I want, that was too stiff for me. I want to go back towards six. So then I'm going to go in. Remember, reverse. Now I've got it set to six. I'm going to lock it down. And I'm going to go ride my bike again and see if that setting feels better to me. So is it as cool as pushing a button? No. But hey, uh, complain to Honda, don't complain to me. I'm just trying to give you a solution that lets you fine-tune your bike, find the setting that's perfect and optimum for you and your wife for the greatest level of comfort. Uh, in the future, is it possible we'll have an electronic component that'll do this? It is possible. We're, you know, I've been uh, working on it with some people for a long time, for a lot of years, and just haven't made much progress, uh, which is why I went ahead and did this, because people have been asking for some way to fine-tune their suspension for years, and so now we have it. So um, this product is uh, 150 bucks. And uh, it'll fit in a small flat rate box, so it only costs seven bucks to ship it to you. Um, and uh, hopefully, um, it'll help you meet your needs. Remember, this isn't a everybody's going to want it product um, because some people just will, aren't going to take a tool to their bike at all. So I understand that. But if you're uh, the guy who likes to tinker, here's a product. So my name's Max. You, you will be able to buy this product at www.traction.com at our, at our web store. Uh, thanks for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and uh, share with your friends who ride the 2018 Plus and are aggravated at the lack of available tuning ability for the suspension. So thanks a lot.